Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. I am so excited this morning that God has allowed us to be able to connect once more on another presentation of Rays of Hope. I am delighted in my heart, in my mind, my soul, how gracious God has been to his people and especially the body of Christ. Those of us that has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And he has allowed us to be able to be in the land of the living. At the same time, his grace is being poured out in our lives each and every day because we have a hope. And that hope goes beyond the grave. So this morning, I am grateful in my heart that the Lord has allowed us to connect once again on another presentation of Rays of Hope. I am Apostle Robert L. Sanders Sr., your servant this morning, that will be sharing with you the Word of God. I am so delighted for Region 2 of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ and how he has blessed Region 2 over the years and how he is blessing us really in a special way right now during this pandemic. He has given us hope, and that hope sustains us because the promises of God are yea and amen. Let us prepare now, go, go before God in prayer, asking his blessings upon our lives because he has been faithful to us. And because of his faithfulness, he deserved to be praised. He deserved to be glorified, magnified, and honored. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father God, we are so grateful this morning that you have allowed us once again to be able to connect on another presentation of Rays of Hope. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that is within us, a hope, O oh God, that has been inspired by you, O oh God, who have given us, Lord, your word. You've given us a future in you, Lord God. You said, O oh God, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but you come that we might have life and that more abundantly. That gives us hope, Lord God. And we are grateful in our hearts, Lord, knowing that you are with us every step of the way. Father, this morning I pray that you would bless each and every one of your sons and daughters that have joined with us on another presentation of Rays of Hope. Grant each one the desires of their hearts and meet every need in their lives. And, O oh God, we will praise you. We will glorify, magnify, and honor you. Father, bless Region 2 of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ International. Thanking you, Lord, for our presider, Bishop James I. Clark, Jr. Continue to bless him and bless his family and bless his wife in a special way and restore her strength in you, O God. Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be together once again on another presentation of Rays of Hope. Thank you. In Jesus' name, let everyone say, 
Amen and amen. Before we get into the Word of God this morning, I just want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who participated in some form in helping me to celebrate my 80th birthday on last weekend. I am so grateful to each of you, the part that you play, perhaps a telephone call, a text, a card, or even a birthday gift. I want you to know it was the best birthday celebration I have ever had. And it was my 80th birthday. God is so good to me, it's so gracious. And I thank God for each one and every one of you who participated in letting me know that you appreciate me and you love me and I love you back because you belong to God. I belong to God. We are his children and we are part of the same family. I love you with the love of God, so thank you in the name of Jesus. Now, let us get right into the Word of God this morning. As you know, we've been studying uh, the Word of God and presenting to you a series of messages under the umbrella uh, title of Fruit Bearing as is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. We are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and because we are the righteousness of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we should be fruit bearers. And the evidence that we are living in Christ, that we bear fruit. And our fruit will remain. Turn with me, if you would, to our foundational scripture in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7 beginning at verse number 15 through verse number 20. Go there with me this morning, if you will, and let us see what the Word of God says. That is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 15 through verse number 20. Look what it says. Be aware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctified in our hearts. That is our foundational scripture for our series of messages on fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. 
Now, if you've been with me for the last few times we were together, we have been sharing and I have given you uh, some notes to, to write down so that we can further study when you have the time to add to what I have given to you because we are living in a time where fruit bearing is so important in the lives of the children of God. You shall know them by their fruit. In other words, we are to be fruit bearers because we are living in Christ. And that the evidence or the proof that we are living in Christ is the fruit that we bear. And remember what Psalms 1 says, ye shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that will bring forth its fruit in its season and his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind driveth away. But the child of God is a fruit bearer, and fruit bearing is proof and evidence that we are living in Christ. Now, the first note I gave you that we are living in Christ as fruit bearers is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, which is love. The fruit of the Spirit, which is love. That is in Galatians chapter 5, 20, verse 22 to verse 23. The child of God is a is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit that dwells in us produce fruit. And we can see that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. You should have that in your notes already. And note number two, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Note number two is fruit of righteousness. Fruit of righteousness, which has to do with living uprightly or uprightness in God. The fruit of righteousness. When one bears the fruit of righteousness, one lives a life of uprightness, and that's in God. And Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 to verse number 11, you should have in your notes. Note number three, that we are fruit bearers in Christ. Fruit of holiness. Fruit of holiness. Fruit of holiness, which speaks of separation. We are separated to God in the world, but not of the world separated to God, to be used by God, to serve the purpose of God, to fulfill God's purpose in our lives, the purpose for us being born, the fruit of holiness, the fruit of holiness. Now, this morning, I want to add to those uh, evidence and proof that we are fruit bearers if we are living in Christ. 
So note number four, note number four, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Number four, fruit of our lips. Make a note of this, fruit of our lips. And the fruit of our lips is thanksgiving. The fruit of our lips is thanksgiving. When we speak, there is a constant flow of thanksgiving to our Lord. Because whatever we have, whatever we have received from God, there's a, there is a perpetual heart of gratitude and expression of thanksgiving that we give to God. We do not take the credit from God. We thank God for what he has done. So fruit bearing is the fruit of our lips, which has to do with thanksgiving. That's the fruit that we bear because we are connected and we are living in Christ. Any man be in Christ is a new creature or a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When you are living in Christ, you give the glory and the honor for God's graciousness back to him in the expression of thanksgiving. That's the fruit of your lips, the fruit of my lips. Any person who lives takes the credit for the blessings that are in their lives and accredit them to themselves or something else is not a fruit bearer, but a selfish and deny what the Lord has done. Keep in mind, everything that we have, everything that we possess, we received from God. We came into this world with nothing, no thing. And since we've been born, Whatever we call our own really came from God. It came from God because he is the owner of all things. The word of God says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. A cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. All the silver and all the gold and all the precious stones belongs to God. How is it belongs to God? He created it. He provided it. So we are not creators as God is creator. We are receivers we were born with nothing. And so what we have that we may call our own, we receive. So therefore, if we are in Christ, the proof that we are in Christ, that we bear fruit. And bearing fruit, number four, is the fruit of our lips, which is expressed in thanksgiving. And we should periodically 
check ourselves to see whether we are putting forth the proper fruit that comes from our lips, the fruit of thanksgiving that we are expressing the proper thanksgiving to our God who have provided for us, who have made ways for us. It is important to keep that in mind so that we will always be in the position to please God in our actions, in our behavior, would bear fruit, if you will, that we belongs to him because it is expressed with our mouth or our lips and we thank him and we praise him for the things that he has done for us. And we are not ashamed to do it because we recognize that we did not create anything. The creator is God himself. We are a receiver. We receive from God. This is why the word of God says, no good thing will I withhold from them that will walk uprightly before me. Are you listening, children of God? So I want you to turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 13, beginning at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 13, beginning at verse 13 through verse number 16. I want you to go with me just for a moment so we can see in the word of God that God expects his children, you and me, to show the proof and the evidence that we are bearing proper fruit, the fruit of our lips, which is expressed with an attitude and a an heart of thanksgiving. So in Hebrews chapter 13, beginning at verse 13, look what it says. Look with me so that you can see it in the word of God. Look what it says. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him, that's Jesus, without the camp, bearing his reproach, bearing his reproach, or bearing his disgrace. Are you with me? Verse 14 says, For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Verse 15, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Did you see that? Did you see that? Verse 15 of Hebrews 13, it says, now talking about the fruit of our lips, which is thanksgiving. It says in verse 14 again, for here have we no continuing city that is here on this earth, but we seek one to come. That's New Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven from the throne of God. 
verse 15 is the one that I want you to focus on that we are to give in expression. The fruit of our lips in expressing thanksgiving to God. So verse 15 of Hebrews 13 says, By him, by him, Jesus, this, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. Giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Isn't that beautiful? God is pleased when we express, if you will, fruit bearing that falls from our lips with the expression of thanksgiving. God is well pleased. So children of God, it is important to keep that in mind as we live for him from day to day. To remind ourselves that fruit bearing, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. And guess what? Fruit bearing is a sign of life. A dead tree cannot bear fruit that please God. Are you listening? Because it is trapped in death. But if the tree is alive, in every tree that God plants, he plants it by the rivers of waters. He plants it by the rivers of waters so that the tree can be properly watered. And watering in the spiritual realm has to do with the Holy Spirit. In the natural, a tree continues to bear fruit as long as it's being nourished by water. Where there is no water, the tree dies, and the tree can no longer bear fruit. So, as recorded in Psalms, number one again, we are like trees. As trees, if you will, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth its fruit in its season. It leaves shall not wither. It's going to remain alive. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. This is absolutely positively important. The child of God is like a tree. And the tree is planted by God. God tells us where he wants us to serve. He plants us. He directs us. He guides us. He looks after us. And when we serve where we are planted, God makes sure in advance before we are planted that there is the continual source of life. And that is the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So as long as our bodies are alive, the Holy Spirit remains in us. 
And as long as our bodies are alive, we can produce fruit because we are planted by the rivers of water. Keep in mind, not a pond, but a river. A pond is stagnant. A pond does not run. Rivers run. Rivers have moving water or living water. The Holy Spirit that's in us is not static. It's always springing up within us because it's the Holy Spirit that keeps us alive, keeps us functioning, keeps us on schedule in fulfilling our God-given assignment. The Holy Spirit is our life because he dwells in us. Our spirit has been transformed by the power of God. And so in that our spirits has been transformed, we are alive. We are alive so that we can thrive in God bearing fruit. And this is absolutely positively necessary. So children of God, fruit bearing is proof and evident. You are living in Christ. No one can be in Christ unless they are alive. A person that has not been born again cannot be in Christ. We are in Christ through birth. This is why it is necessary to be born again. Like Jesus said to Nicodemus on one occasion, marvel not or don't be surprised, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. You must be. And so being born again or being made spiritually alive, we are to bear fruit. Every now and then, we should look at our lives and see whether we are doing as God has created us to do. See whether we are living the way God wants us to live as fruit bearers. Remember, a corrupt tree or a tree that has not been made alive cannot produce fruit. A corrupt tree cannot produce good fruit. A corrupt tree produce corrupt fruit. Are you listening? But when we are in Christ, then we are fruit bearers because we are in him. And we bear the fruit that we are, were ordained to produce. Always keep in mind, the word of God says, we didn't choose the Lord. He chose us. Jesus, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I chose you and I ordain you to go and bring forth fruit. And then he said, your fruit shall remain. Shall remain. Your fruit shall last. Your fruit shall bear fruit. You shall be fruitful. And this is evident and proof that we are in Christ. And this is so important to know. So children of God, this morning, add this new note. Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Now, 
I want you to add another note this morning before we conclude. We may not be able to finish it, but I want to give you the fifth note this morning. And that note is fruit in work. Fruit in work. We are to bear fruit, and that is fruit in work. And that work is, has to do with consistency. Add the word consistency. This is important. You see, when the Lord saved us, he works in us both the will and to do of his good pleasure. He works in us both the will and to do of his good pleasure. And the Lord tells us to work out our salvation. Work out our salvation. The Lord worked salvation in us, and we are to work it out. Are you listening? He works in, and we are to work it out. So, fruit bearing, note number five, is fruit in work. W-O-R-K, fruit in work. And we are to work consistently or consistently. In other words, we are to be consistent in what we do. Not one day and off another day and for five months or three months and quit and come back again. No. We are to be consistent. The fruit in work. Consistency. That's what God wants. So that we can please him and glorify him as we serve him. Work. Are you working for the master? We are to do the work that has been assigned to our hands. Praise the name of our God. Guess what? I'm working right now. I'm working right now on rays of hope. I am doing what God has assigned to my hands to do. And to me, it's a joy. It's a joy and a privilege to be able to serve the people of God. And so, what God wants us to bear fruit. This is key. This is important. And we are to be consistent. Amen? Can somebody say amen? So, what I want you to do in note number five is fruit in work, fruit in work. And that sh should be done with consistency. I want you to turn with me in your Bible, the Word of God. I want you to turn to the book of Colossians. Go to the book of Colossians with me just for a moment. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, if you would. And I want you to add my note number 5, fruit in work with consistency. I want you to put Colossians uh, chapter 1, Verse 9 through verse 14. Did you get that? 
verse 9 through verse number 14. And let's see what it says. And, and well, you know, um, my time is almost over. And I, uh, but anyway, let's go. Colossians chapter 1. We can read a few verses together because I want you to see this, that the fruit of works, the fruit of works, and with consistency. And in Galatians chapter 1, verse number 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of, of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Guess what? We cannot work appropriately and proper unless we are filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10 says that ye might walk worthy, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful, being fruitful in every good work, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Did you see that? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Did you see that? Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son? in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Isn't God, God is wonderful, isn't he? And children of God, we should be encouraged, we should be inspired to be a fruit bearer because bearing fruit is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. And I know that you want to live in him and be victorious. I am so excited that you are with me this morning. And I am so grateful how God has blessed you and is blessing you. And what we're going to do, we're going to pick up where we left off on next Sunday morning at 1130 a.m., on another presentation of Rays of Hope. Make up in your mind, children of God, to be a fruit bearer. Don't be stagnant in your walk with God. Don't be fruitless, but produce the fruit that God wants you to be, to produce. He wants you to be fruitful and successful. God has never designed anyone to be a failure. Everything that God creates produces. And you were created in the image of God, created in his likeness, and he wants you to be a fruit bearer. Let the world see the Christ that is in you. Expose Jesus to the world. Let your light shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And keep in mind that you are somebody in God because you didn't choose him. He chose you and me before the foundation of the world. God bless you, heaven smile upon you, 
and may God's best always be yours. Father, in the name of your Son, let your grace and mercy be multiplied in the lives and the hearts of your sons and daughters. We thank you, Lord, that you chose us to be fruit bearers. You chose us in you before the foundation of the world. And Father, we thank you. We praise you from the depths of our hearts. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. In Jesus' name, to God be the glory. Thank you so very much for being with me this morning on another presentation of Rays of Hope. You can remain hopeful as you continue to be a fruit bearer, bearing the fruit that God wants you to bear because he has planted you. And wherever God plants you, it's in good ground. And because you are in good ground, you're going to bear fruit that will glorify and magnify his holy name. I thank God for each and every one of you this morning. Enjoy the rest of your day and know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are a divine anointed and appointed fruit bearer that emanates from the very presence of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' blessed name.